So I talked to, like I mentioned offline to Joe Rogan on his podcast yesterday. I talked to him all the time about this. I think the concern is less about the uh, long-term effects mm -hmm. like on paper. It's more about the, the like um, people like Anthony Fauci and people at the top are simply misrepresenting the data or like are, are not accurately being transparent, not collecting the data properly, not reporting on the data properly, not being transparent, not representing the uncertainties, mm -hmm. not uh, openly saying they were wrong two months uh, ago, like in a way that's not like dramatic, but uh, revealing the basic process of science when you have to do your best under uncertainty, just also just being inauthentic. There's a, there's a sense especially with like a younger generation now, there's a certain way on the internet, like the internet can smell bullshit much better than previous generations could. <laughs> and so they they see there's a kind of um, inauthenticity that comes with being uh, uh, like representing authority. Like I am a scientist, I'm an expert, I have a PhD, I have four decades of work, yeah, therefore yeah, everyone yeah. should listen to me. Got it. And somehow that maps to this feeling of, well, what are they hiding? If they're speaking from authority like this, if everyone is in agreement like this, that means they all have emails between each other. They said, we're gonna tell this, this is the message we're gonna tell the public. Then what is the truth, the actual truth? Maybe there's a much bigger uncertainty. Maybe there's uh, dead people in the basement that they're hiding from from bad mRNA vaccine experiments. Maybe they're and then and then the, the, the conspiracy theories start to grow uh, naturally when there's this kind of mistrust of the that. So it's less about kind of um, like a deep concern about long term effects. It's a concern about long term effects if we find out that there's some secret stuff that we're not being told, it all lends on that. So what what the heck, I mean, I so I put the blame not on the data, but basically on the leaders and the communi communicators of the science at the top. Well, uh, to that, I would say all the data, as far as I know, are made public. So you can dive into it. And I know a lot of people ask me questions and I just say, it's right here in the data. And I know a lot of people can't do that. They can't dive into it. But that's one solution for people who are able. It's Now, you could argue, well, maybe they've left data out. Well, then not even I can help because then they're hiding it from me too. And I think that's highly unlikely. I think for the most part, the FDA requires the release of all the clinical trial data, right? So, okay. Well, so this clinical trial data, that's one thing. So that's the data that we should be focusing on, right? Is it, So yeah. there's, there's a lot of different data sets here. So there's preclinical data, which yep. is everything that was done in the lab before this vaccine ever went into a human arm. It's all the cell culture work that we talked about a little, yep. experiments in animals. All of that is publicly accessible. Most of it gets published. And then there's the initial drug filing, which is huge the books of diet. You can get that and look at it, right? This is me sort of asking sort of difficult questions here. Right. It's okay. Uh, so there is a there's a lot of money to be made by makers of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So for these companies, and obviously there's a distrust of those folks too. They've done a lot of really good things in this world, but they there's the incentives are such that you want to sweep stuff under the rug if if you're not 100% pure in your ethics. And how hard is it for for that data to be fabricated? Uh, manipulated, I mean, like what's your intuition for the for the pretrial stuff? I think when you when you start uh, fabricating, then you get inconsistencies, which are pretty easy to pick up. When you're talking about some large scale things yeah. of this nature, yeah. because then you can look through the data very. You're gonna. Ha I mean, it, we require looking very carefully, but you will see inconsistencies from one trial to another, and uh, that might ring a bell that something's been done. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like the moon landing thing. I, I think it's like sometimes like going to the moon is easier than faking. <laughs> right. Uh, in in, in right. the sense, it might be it might be easier to do a large scale trial and get an uh, effective vaccine versus faking it. But you know, when okay. you brought up the for profit issue, I, I think that is always been 
an issue. And I've always felt that having your health depend on for-profit industry may not be the best solution. And I don't know how else to do it. People tell me I'm a dreamer that uh, thinking that, you know, all medicines could be nonprofit. But I also think that the world should have one health system that takes care of everyone, right? Because there are some countries that can't and other countries have an excess like us. So I wish we could do that. Well, the, the argument is the speed at which the vaccines for COVID were produced would never happen in a nonprofit system would never happen in a non-capitalist system. Oh, I could set up a vaccine production institute in the US that would get the vaccines done because you just need to put money into it. That's what made these vaccines get done, money. They poured billions of dollars and they got it done quickly. But if I set up a nonprofit institute of vaccines throughout the US, staffed with really talented people, pay them well, keep them motivated, You'll get your vaccine. No, but I, th this, th that's the <laughs> thing with capitalism is that uh, the selection of who to hire, like good, w when you say good people, yeah. the capitalism has a machine that so fires people who are not good and selects people that are good. Coming from the Soviet Union, the dream of communism is, is similar to what you're saying, uh, broadly defined. It certainly doesn't work yeah. in the broad, the question whether it works in the healthcare uh, space. You know, th there is some aspect to the machine of capitalism being the most effective way to select for good people to effectively yeah. produce the thing. And but then, of course, a lot of people would argue the current, even the current healthcare is not with like regulations. There's some weird mix where there's a lot of opportunities for inefficiencies. There's a lot of opportunities for bureaucracy. So you you have like the worst of, of all worlds. Can't there be some intermediate that works because? Yeah. I mean, the, the other issue that we haven't mentioned is that politics gets thrown into this, yes, and that's and nice. that really messes up. And it should never be mixed with healthcare, but it's it is because a lot of funding comes from the government, so that's another confounding factor. But I I, I really think I could make a, a vaccine institute that if someone didn't do well, I'd fire them. No, you're not going to stay if you can't do your job and do it. Well, you don't give them incentives, but it doesn't have to be the two extremes, I think. It has there has to be a solution that people don't have this mistrust for a a company making huge profits off of a drug. But you know what? It's, it's funny. It seems that vaccines and antivirals bear the brunt of this criticism, yet there are many other pharmaceuticals that people rely on yeah. of all sorts. They don't seem to question and have issues with those. And they have far more side effects than vaccines. <laughs> it's a very virus. strange how we're, we're picking that way. But I should also say that when, you know, if you have one big uh, vaccine institute, one of the other like sets of uh, vaccine conspiracies, I mean, I would say they're a little farther out into the, into the wild set of ideas, but it's, you know, that's one way to con control the populace mm -hmm. is by injecting substances into them, right? People, I mean, part of that, uh, funny enough, is probably has to do with needles versus uh, something you put in your mouth. Yeah. But there's yeah. something about the government, especially when it's government mandated injection of a substance into you. I don't. <laughs> It doesn't, I don't care what the science says, if it's 100% effective, 100% safe, there's a, there's a natural distrust of what, like even if this is effective and safe, giving the government mm. power to do this, yeah. aren't they gonna start getting ideas down the line for, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I, I think that they can barely govern. I don't think they're gonna do that, well, but you don't have to take Unless you're a federal employee, you don't have to take a COVID vaccine. Right? Yeah, but that's that largely has to do, not largely, but there is an individualistic uh, spirit, you know, to the um, to the American people. There's this like, you're not going to take my gun away from me. Sure, you're not going, and I think that, you know, that's 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 something that makes America what it is. Just coming from the Soviet Union, there's a power to sort of resisting the overreach of government. That's quite interesting. Because I'm a believer, I, I hope that it's possible to have 
to strive towards uh, a government that works extremely well. I think at its best, a government represents the people and functions mm. in the similar way that you're you're mentioning. But that like pushback, uh, even if it turns into conspiracy theory sometimes, I think is actually healthy in the long arc of history. It can be frustrating sometimes, but that mechanism of pushing back against power, against authority, can be healthy. I, I agree. I think it's fine to question the vaccines. What I have issue with is that many people put out incorrect information, and I'm not sure what their motivations are. Right. And it's very hard to fight that because then it's my word versus theirs. And I'm happy to talk with people about any of their concerns, but if you start getting into the stuff that just isn't true, then we have a problem. The thing I struggle with is conspiracy theories, whatever language you wanna use, but sort of um, ideas that challenge the mainstream quote unquote narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, given our current social media and internet, like the way it operates, they can become viral much easier. There's something much more compelling about them. Sure. Like I have sure. a secret that about the way things really work. That becomes viral and that's very frustrating because then you're not having a conversation on level ground. The, you know, when you're trying to present scientific ideas and then there's conspiracy theories, the conspiracy theories become much viral much faster. And then you're not just having a discussion on level ground. It's, um, that that's the frustrating part, that it's not an even discussion. Can I just say one more yeah. thing? So. I mean, the internet is here to stay, so we're gonna have to figure out how to <laughs> yeah. deal with it, right? But from my perspective, I was skeptical that these mRNA vaccines, that any COVID vaccine would be ready within a year. Yeah, That's amazing. Me too. Plus, these M the way I look at the mRNA vaccine as a scientist, it's gee whiz to me. It's amazing that it worked. And I, I think the data are great, so I want it. <laughs> Well, so as a scientist, I want it. One of the really sad things, again, with me too, as a, as a scientist or as an admirer of science, is, um, I don't know if it's politics, but one of the sad things to me about the previous year is that I I wasn't free to celebrate the incredible accomplishment of science mm -hmm. with the vaccines. I was very skeptical that it's possible to develop a vaccine so quickly. So... It's unfortunate that we can't celebrate how amazing humans are to, to, to come up with this vaccine. Now this vaccine might have long-term effects. That doesn't mean this is not incredible. <laughs> why, why, um, why couldn't you celebrate? Um, like, cause I would love to inspire the world with the amazing things science can do. And you know, when you say something about the vaccines, they're not listening to the science. A lot of people are not listening to the yeah, science. Sure. What they hear is, oh, you're um, you're a Republican or you're a Democrat and you're social signaling, doing some kind of signaling.